key to a successful building envelope is continuity between the water, air, vapor, and thermal control layers in the assembly and locating them in the correct place within the building envelope. This becomes absolutely imperative when designing flat roofs, especially at parapets. We are looking for complete continuity between all of the control layers, ensuring that the roof membrane transitions seamlessly to the top of the parapet and down onto the weather-resistive barrier, and ensuring that we are preventing air leakage from the exterior into the parapet, as well as from the interior into the parapet that could result in an accumulation of moisture. Let's start with the flat roof membrane itself. It doesn't really matter what membrane you're using, as long as it's monolithically watertight and airtight. In most cases, this means we're working with a fully adhered membrane, where the membrane is glued down onto the substrate to prevent air movement between the membrane and the cover board, and to ensure that water isn't going to leak through any of the seams. We could also be using a reinforced fluid applied membrane, or a hot applied torch down modified bitumen membrane. Again, as long as the membrane is watertight and airtight, that's what matters most. In this detail, we're using an 80mm adhered TPO membrane with heat welded seams to provide that monolithic water and air seal. If we were using a fleece backed TPO membrane, we would want a polyurethane based adhesive that was sprayed onto the deck with 100% coverage to ensure that the membrane is truly fully adhered. The TPO membrane is adhered to a compatible gypsum cover board. We like to use Dens Deck Prime, but often this gets installed directly on high density polyiso, whatever cover board or substrate material that you decide to specify, it's really important that it's not sensitive to moisture. Coated glass facers tend to perform the best, whereas glass reinforced cellulose and other paper facers will delaminate and fail if they get wet. Now, notice at this transition between the flat roof surface and the parapet wall, we have a triangular shaped component called a cant strip. Cant strips help us to provide a smooth transition between the horizontal surface of the roof and the vertical plane of the walls, reducing the stresses on the membrane at that 90 degree corner, especially since the membrane will want to expand and contract. Cant strips can be made of pretty much any material, as long as it's compatible with the roof membrane specified and its adhesives. For example, you wouldn't want to specify a wood or EPS foam cant strip if you were installing a hot applied torch down membrane. The membrane laps up onto the parapet and is mechanically fastened to the wall with a termination bar set in a continuous bead of sealant. This not only provides some hold down strength at the ends of the membrane, but it also ensures that the membrane will stay in place if there happens to be an adhesion failure. We then wrap the rough parapet framing with a self-adhered peel and stick flashing membrane. We seal the connection between the termination bar and the membrane with a flexible flashing tape, and this connects the water control layer at the roof to the self-adhered weather resistive barrier on the exterior walls. We want to make sure that we're using a self-adhered or fluid applied weather resistive barrier product on the exterior walls to ensure that the exterior walls remain watertight and prevent air leakage into the parapet. This is really important since parapet walls are placed at a much higher risk considering that they're experiencing full weather exposure due to a lack of overhangs. It's really important that we're using good products to ensure that our walls remain dry. Don't use anything like house wraps or building wraps as they often fail as air barriers. Moving on to the sloped coping above the flashed parapet framing, this is also really important to get right to ensure that water doesn't infiltrate into the parapet wall. Notice that we flashed the rough parapet separately from the coping for redundancy. If water was to get past that coping, whether it was through a leaky seam or a fastener penetration, it will not compromise the parapet wall below. The coping cap should always be sloped inwards towards the roof membrane to avoid staining the exterior facade. The framing for the coping itself can be constructed in a lot of different ways, the simplest being just a beveled wood plate. For thicker parapet walls with many layers of rigid insulation and a thicker cladding system such as a brick veneer, we'd want to frame out the coping with plywood and blocking or even rigid foam insulation. We then will install a peel and stick flashing membrane over the coping framing. Here we're calling out a heat resistant flashing product since we're specifying a stainless steel coping strip. As we all know, steel is conductive and that surface underneath the metal coping is going to heat up, especially in the summertime. This does have the potential to melt some flashing membranes that are not designed for high temperatures. Some other smaller details that we need to address prior to installing the metal coping cap. Over here, we've called out a stainless counter flashing with a drip edge to protect that termination bar connection and the UV sensitive flexible flashing tape. 
We don't want either of these connections to be exposed to heat or UV light, as this can cause building tapes, sealants, and flashing membranes to deteriorate. We also have the heat-resistant flashing membrane lapping over the top of this flashing to ensure that we're properly shingling these components to shed water. Also notice how we are lapping that heat-resistant membrane onto the underside of the beveled plate and down onto the weather-resistant barrier and flashing membrane. If we did a pen test right now to check for water control continuity, our pen wouldn't leave the paper or the tablet in this case. Protecting the top of the parapet wall with a metal or stone coping cap is really important as the membranes and flashings will be exposed to constant weathering, heat, and UV light from sun exposure. Parapets are a sensitive area because they are the intersection between many different components and water and air just loves to get inside at any chance it gets. The stainless coping itself is typically composed of three parts, the coping cap, a splice plate, and cleats. The cleats are installed first over some eighth inch entangled mesh which provides a drainage path behind the metal coping if and when water gets inside. The cleats are designed to receive the coping cap, that's why they're that L shape. After the cleats are installed on either side of the parapet, the splice plate is installed along with the coping cap which clips into the cleats. So now that we've managed water and air on the outside of the assembly, we now need to prevent air from leaking into the parapet and from the roof from the conditioned interior. The structural deck, whether it's a plywood, OSB, or fluted steel decking, is not airtight and the air leaks can deposit moisture into the parapet and the roof assembly. While flat roof membranes are highly resistant to water and air, they are also vapor impermeable. We're essentially putting a vapor barrier in the wrong place in the assembly, meaning that any moisture that's driven into the upper parts of the assembly is gonna get trapped because it can't dry through that roof membrane. So we need an additional air and vapor barrier membrane installed over the roof deck and under the rigid insulation layers. We want to use a self-adhered or fluid applied air and vapor barrier in this scenario since we don't want air movement underneath that could potentially leak into the upper parts of the assembly. In this particular detail, we're using a fluid applied product. That way we're coating the entire surface of the roof deck prior to the framing of the parapet. After the parapet is framed and sheathed, we install more of that fluid applied membrane up onto the interior face of the parapet up to where the flat roof membrane laps up onto the wall like this. This prevents air from communicating to and from the parapet wall within the roof assembly. We're also using closed cell polyurethane spray foam at the rim joist connection below as a strategic air seal at this joint. We don't want air potentially traveling through the tiny gap between the exterior sheathing and the decking. We aren't too concerned about the spray foam cracking from expansion and contraction since we have a couple layers of rigid insulation installed on the exterior of the assembly. We talk a lot about the importance of air tightness and controlling both interior and exterior air movement in flat roof assemblies in my climate specific guides to flat roof design. I highly recommend that you check those out as well as the free articles available on my website. Links will be in the description below. Finally, we want to make sure that we are properly insulating the parapet wall to reduce the potential for interstitial condensation and energy loss through the parapet framing. Here we are insulating the wood framed parapet with a combination of rigid insulation and cavity insulation to provide thermal control continuity from the walls to the roof assembly. The roof is insulated with polyisocyanurate and the parapet walls are insulated with a combination of rock wool bats and rigid rock wool to ensure that the walls have the ability to dry if they get wet. Rock wool comfort board, the rigid insulation, has a bumpy surface which provides a drainage plane behind the insulation layers. You may notice that the insulation layers at the parapet are not completely continuous. This is okay on wood frame parapets, however, parapets that are framed with light gauge steel should be surrounded by a continuous blanket of rigid insulation. Here we have a detail of a parapet framed out of light gauge steel. Notice how the rigid insulation extends up the backside of the parapet framing and even onto the parapet coping which features rigid polyiso. We still have rigid rock wool comfort board insulation on the exterior side of the walls again to ensure that the parapet wall has the ability to dry out if it happens to get wet. This continuous layer of outboard rigid insulation will warm the surface of the sheathing sufficiently to prevent interstitial condensation in most climates. Steel is highly conductive and if we only insulated within the stud cavities we would lose about 80% of the effective R value of the assembly. Rigid insulation provides a well-needed thermal break between the conductive steel studs and the exterior environment. Again, this is not only to prevent energy loss, but it's mainly for condensation control. 
Now, air sealing metal roof decks for parapets constructed out of light gauge steel is a little more complicated. We can't install a self-adhered membrane directly on the fluted metal deck or a fluid applied coating. We need an additional layer of sheathing or a cover board. Here we're using DENS deck and a self-adhered air and vapor barrier membrane. We installed the self-adhered membrane continuously on the entire roof deck and lap it over the self-adhered weather resistive barrier on the exterior walls prior to framing out the parapet. Then after the parapet is framed, we come back with another strip of peel and stick membrane on the interior side of the parapet wall to seal the parapet and the roof assembly from air leakage at this joint, wrapping it over the top of the parapet framing. We also need to make sure that we shingle the self-adhered weather barrier at the top of the parapet wall down over the air barrier to ensure that we're not getting water or air leakage here. We want everything to be completely continuous with redundancy. Air can't get in or out except in dedicated locations where we want it to be distributed in. We want fresh, filtered, humidity controlled, and temperature controlled air coming from our ERVs or HRVs, not from air leaks. For more comprehensive information on parapet detailing, check out the free articles available on my website, and make sure to pick up my climate specific guides and details for flat roof design. Those are only available at asiridesigns.com shop. All of the links will be in the description below. Good luck on your projects. Cheers.